passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver, Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Dr. Kevin Show, where we challenge everything and everyone on a weekly basis. Our job here in the Dr. Kevin Show is to expand you, enlighten you, sometimes inflame you, I don't know, do something. But then uh, that's what we do every week. Uh, this week, I am actually going to be interviewing a fellow uh, Ohm Times radio host, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but as always, before we bring her on, we will start by um, doing our hot topic. Now, as many of you remember, my hot topic is either what makes you that something that makes me hot under the collar, what makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. Well, this week, I'm afraid that my collar's a little hot and my fuzz is a little low. So I want to start with why, oh, why do we have to make politics the measuring stick for our friendships, our familial relationships? Why have we reached a point in, uh, in this country's evolution and the evolution of humanity where literally um, people are ending friendships or won't speak to fellow people and nobody wants to give anybody else the right to have a different opinion. Like, you know, why do you think that? invite to listen. You know, now many of you know I do a morning coffee every morning. If you don't, please come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, like my page, and every day you're going to see a morning coffee where I put a bunch of pictures together and give an inspiration, motivational message every day. And, you know, my thing yesterday was the seven of wands from the Mother Peace Tarot, right upside down. She was drinking coffee on her head, and she wasn't even spilling any, which was pretty impressive. But, you know, what that card told me for the day was to listen to other people's opinions, respect diversity, listen with an open mind and an open heart. And it feels as if we have gotten so sucked in to the media, black and white, us and them, everything has got to be a battle. And if you're right, then I'm wrong and I can't be wrong. So you got to be a dunderhead. And I am seeing all of this go on. And the question is, why? Why have we sunk to this? Literally, why have we sunk to this? For those of you who also are unaware of it, um, if you go to weboflight.com, um, you can see my weekly TV show. And coming up, I'm going to have our astrologer, Dorothy Morgan, New Hampshire astrologer. We're actually going to do a whole show on what is the astrology for election day this year. What's going on astrologically that's affecting this year's election, especially on election day? So that being said, I do want to remind people this is now a call-in show, so feel free to call in and talk to myself, talk to my guest, express an opinion. We would love to hear from you. So with that, I'm going to bring in Alaya. Um, and I'm going to first uh, lie a friction. Before I even introduce any more than that, I'm going to put her on the hot seat and say, what do you think of the hot topic and what are your thoughts? <laughs> well, I'm glad you bring it up, Dr. Kev. It's, it's good controversy. The whole thing is I observe the social media and uh, well, my thing is, you know, mostly do a spirituality. But the whole thing, people are followers. It's like, who has the loudest mouth? Who has the most energy? Who is the most forceful? And people are afraid to be authentic. Um, they need to be popular. All right, well, this person, gee, you know, they have this great energy. They're saying that we're going to do this, this, this. And they follow. They're, they're, 
basically afraid, in a sense, to uh, make their own decisions um, and follow the boys because they're the most aggressive. Not necessarily the right decisions, but because the energy is the most aggressive. And everybody wants, the world is so chaotic. Everybody wants to tear each other apart instead of just taking a breath and be calm. They're messed up, uh, taking in all these people, you know, wanting attention, uh, different groups, even with uh, Standing Rock. It's a big movement out there. And the major media hasn't covered it at all. A lot of the social media is going on. But even with the political things going on, it's fear tactics. You know, you have to follow me because I'm going to, you know, this is going to be the best way. And people are fearful. So someone convinces them that, their way is going to be the best way, that you have to do this. They follow it, even if they, in their heart, they're saying, well, maybe not, but maybe I should go along with the popular opinion. So that's kind of where I stand on just observing what's going on in the world. Well, why would, do you think um, that we have reached an all-time high of fear and disempowerment? I mean, because a lot of this is all is, is about not wanting to take responsibility, not wanting to think, just kind of going along for the ride type of mentality. I'm a donkey, so I'm going to go with all the donkeys. I'm an elephant. I'm going to go with all the elephants. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's very black and white thinking. Do you think that we are more like this than we've ever been? Or do you think that this is something where we've become more of? No, I think if you look at all different cultures and different timelines, there's always been this type of situation. I think the internet has brought things to, right into your face, whether it's terrorism, and it's the constant fear aspect. Uh, look at this person, you know, look at this killing, look at this terrorism, these, these bombings, you know, look at all the, the different groups that are crying for attention. And you throw this into one big mixing pot, and people are in this big mixing pot, and they don't know what to do. So they're looking for somebody to give them a, a, a safety rope. You know, hey, pull me out of this. Make everything right and nice and whatever. I've seen this peak happen different timelines when you study history. Uh, it wasn't so noticed because they didn't have the Internet to spread it constantly, but the, it was still there. We're just repeating history over and over. You know, we have to make a choice to say, well, I really think this is right. And if you make that choice to say, I think this is right, you have to be authentic in your heart, saying, this is right for humanity. Look at the overall picture. What can I do to make things right? And you get one person, and they influence another. Just energetic-wise, uh, Heart Math Institute has done studies where how people affect their energy, affects other people, and becomes a ripple effect. And I think this is where we're at this point in history, where we can have a positive effect and get out of this huge fear mode that everybody's, everybody's paranoid, everybody's, you know, should I have a gun, you know, to protect myself? Um, Am I being discriminated against? Um, and there's a lot wrong in this world, but we have to find a calm way to solve it. That's my two so, cents, anyhow. Do, do you, <laughs> ah, that was two and a half. Give yourself some credit. Oh, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that wasn't, no. No, I was just saying it had more value than two cents. Um, <laughs> so what... Um, do you think, 
do you think that the media should be held more accountable for the shitstorm, for what they're doing, that they intentionally incite anxiety and all of these things? Should we be holding the media more accountable? What do you think? Yeah, def- definitely, because, you know, the major media only wants to, and this is just observation, seems to want to instill fear to um, and make it like, oh, well, this is just the world situation, but why don't we have any good news major media programs, you know, like Channel 2? Oh, this guy, you know, this helps so and so on the street or, you know, help this child. We don't see that. We just see uh, people, horrible pitch, pictures of terrorism in Syria and etc. Now you have the internet media, which is more in the pulse of uh, the social networking, where we try to say, okay, we're listening. What is what is your feelings? What's going on here? You know, what do you want to know? How can we help you? So you you have two different things. I think the internet radio gets people to think instead of just being brainwashed <laughs> basically by the major media. That's, okay, you know, well, we're getting ready to go on. We're getting ready to go on break in a second. I'm going to do a quick read-through about your bio, and then when we come back, I'm going to put you through the Dr. Kevin paces. Oh, shit. Um, Aaliyah <laughs> Frischen, in her own words, is an energy healer, ancient energy caretaker, peace activist, and spiritual facilitator. Her unique background, including a near-death experience with psychic intuitive abilities, and we'll be right back. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience in all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are are the the inspired and the inspiration. There is no death, only a change of worlds. Chief Seattle. Deborah Livingston is an award-winning intuitive psychic medium whose international services include mediumship, spiritual assessment, animal communication, and spiritual mentoring. She is a published author and a trained shaman. Deborah provides evidential messages from spirit and departed loved ones. Learn more at devlivemedium.com. That's D-E-B-L-I-V medium.com. Hi, I'm Jimmy Buffett. How would you like to meet an endangered manatee? You can by joining Save the Manatee Club's Adopt the Manatee program. You can't take them home, but you can get to know your new manatee friend through the photo, biography, and information the club sends to you. And you can read updates on your manatee in the club newsletter. More importantly, your contribution goes to programs that are working to save manatees from extinction. It's easy to help. Call 1-800-432-JOIN.
Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show. If you would like to be part of this conversation, you can call in at 1-202-570-7057, and you can be asking questions of my guest, uh, Leah Frisch, or myself, or just, you know, weigh in on our conversations. Um, Alea is an Ohm Times radio host herself. Um, She has expertise in many modalities, which she uses in her private readings. She brings the energy of the ancestors into the present in order to boost the collective awareness of all life forms on planet Earth. Alea is a a spirit-given name, one who shines the light on the path for others. Given to me, she says, to represent her energy as an Earth guardian and ascension facilitator. Her near-death expansions or spiritual awakening journey. What role does crystal skulls play through time, and what is the purpose of this journey collectively with them in the present times? She will focus on what your soul path is at this time. If you'd like to know more about her, you can go to facebook.com backslash Alea, A-L-L-A-Y-A-H dot Frisch, F-R-I-S-C-H, or you can find her on Ohm Times Radio, or you can go to sanctuaryofthewhitedove.com. Now, the easiest way to find her is to come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin. When you're there, click that like button because I'm a likable guy. If you don't believe me, just ask me. I'll tell you. I'm a likable guy. Uh, And you will find at the top of uh, our thing today right now is this uh, show about Alea, along with all of her tags, all of her links, all of the information about her, and you can click right through. Alea, are you still there? Oh, I'm here. (laughs) Okay, so now we're going to get into the meat of the show. Now we've gone through our hot topic, um, which is that in this first segment, I like to ask that you share with my listening audience um, by taking them outside the box, someplace you want to stretch their comfort zones. Uh, So where would you like to do that tonight? Oh, gee. Um... I like them to realize, you know, the the more than just the physical body and the job and the um, whatever parental role they have or relationship role they have, and to find a, a true purpose in their life. I mean, it's a balance between duality. I mean, most people think, you know, anything spiritual has to do with uh, preconceived notions of whatever religious beliefs they have. It's not. It's how you relate to people. It's how you relate to the planet. And you say, why bother with the planet? Well, the whole thing, the planet Earth sustains you. It gives you water. It gives you air to breathe. It, you know, helps the plants give you food. You know, the whole list goes on. And if you don't pay attention to it, you constantly drain it, you won't have a planet. Thus, you won't have life. So that's that's an important part. I want people to start thinking of this, you know, to get out of their heads of their daily life and be able to offer something in return for the life that this planet gives them. And people don't always want to think that way, but that's what I try to open their mind to a little bit. So if people um, look at that they have a responsibility to the planet, how do you think that that would change? And what does that responsibility look like? The responsibility is respect for all life forms on this planet, whether it's human, animal, plant, or mineral, or anything. It's being part of your existence on this planet. I know it seems, like I say, you wanted to think out of the box, so this is what we're doing. Not to think of what I have to do, or what I have to make for dinner, or, you know, the whole gamut of 24 hour life. You have responsibility. Um, It's a symbiotic relationship. If you constantly take from the planet per se, 
and there's millions of people here. You're going to drain all resources. And um, just like uh, I mentioned Standing Rock, uh, that's a perfect example. Uh, water is life movement that's going on. It's a very peaceful movement. But what they're just saying is uh, what all the indigenous elders all over the world are saying. You know, be responsible for your home space, you know, of recycling. It, it seems like, oh, I don't want to be bothered with this. Somebody else can do it. But no, it's your responsibility as an inhabitant of one that coexists here to uh, take some responsibility of what you do to the planet or how you drain it or what you give back to the planet. How is that for out-of-the-box thinking? Well, for some of my people, that will be very much out-of-the-box thinking. It's not necessarily <laughs> out-of-the-box thinking for me, but um, so when people think of the planet, though, I mean, the planet's a big place. It's a small place. It's a mm -hmm. big place. And I'm all about, you know, I do a lot of work with Mother Earth and respecting Mother Earth and, and things like this. But I think that sometimes, you know, for my, my, my average listener who is out there and they're treading through the day and they're trying to make sure there's groceries on the table and maybe they got kids that they're taking care of or a very demanding job or parents or whatever and the world is uh, caving in to say take take consideration you know of the planet and being there I, I I wonder if it will just shut them down I mean like ugh. so can so can you give people three to five things where they could choose like one today and say today I can do this and I can fit that in my life. And when my life has fitted in and I've worked with it and, and I realize it makes a difference, then tomorrow maybe I'll take something else on the list. I find that if we, if we make the vision too big, it gives people the excuse to not take any action. I think the, um, like I said, I, I work with thinking about energy. Everything is energy, period, you know. but. Your listeners, when you get out of bed in the morning, just your attitude before you put your feet out of that bed, just if your feet just take a moment, you know, sit at the end of the bed, wake up, take a deep breath and say, I'm grateful for all I have and today I'm going to have a good day. And see how that affects your life for the rest of the day. Because you're setting an intent that, of positive energy that no matter what you face you have made a choice you'll make a good day now people around you might not but I think the reality is if you're centered people will react to you different or if you see somebody that's you know really having a bad day and if you don't verbally retaliate when they're getting at you, it calms them down. And even if you have to thought, well, gee, maybe they're having a bad day. So maybe, you know, I should let it go. I shouldn't take it personal, you know, and punch them out or something. And they can relate to their family members this way. They can relate to the animals that share their lives that they do, um, to their children. Just being taken that moment in the morning taking a deep breath, being grateful for all that you have. Even if you don't think you have anything, you have fresh air to breathe. That's something without air, even if it's polluted in the city, you wouldn't be breathing and you wouldn't be alive. So be grateful for something and it'll affect your whole day. So I don't think that's an impossible task to ask anybody. No, I don't think that's an impossible task. And I and that's exactly what I was looking for, which was something that people can do. So if people want to start and do something simple, a first step is 
get up every morning, sit on the edge of your bed, give yourself five to 10 minutes, but you can do it in five, but give yourself five to 10 minutes and simply say, today I'm going to choose to have a good day. Two, I'm going to um, list a couple of things to be that, that I need to be grateful for and what they are. And then perhaps three, they could even say, and I will find compassion for people who are not having a good day today, who are not as lucky as I am to be having the good day I'm, I'm going to have today or I'm having today. So those are very like simple, doable steps that are not overwhelming. Would you agree? Oh, I would because I know when you first wake up, just the presence of your mind. I remember years ago, I used to have this game I used to try. One day I wake up and I'd say, yeah, I'm going to have a good day. And the day went smoothly. I mean, you know, you had ups and downs, but, you know, it wasn't bad. Then the next day, you know, I'd wake, try something else and, you know, something's going to go wrong today. Well, it did. <laughs> so it's going back and forth as experiment this and it's really the power of your thought, of your intention, how what you set your day as. If you say I'm gonna have a good day, things will go a lot smoother. If you wake up and say the world is lousy, I can't deal with this anymore that's what you bring to you. It's the it's the element of manifestation. What you give out is what you're getting back. Well, and I know, so, I know we're going to be going on break any minute now, but uh, so as soon as I hear the music, we'll be winding this segment down. But I know that every day I, up oh, and there it is. And we will be right back <laughs> with Leia Frisch. Conscious Connection, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in Sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Have you been searching for a perspective beyond the mainstream? Check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pasquale and Diana Gold Holland, on Share International Radio for thought-provoking views behind the news, Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us at shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. Hi, this is Bill Maher. I can find humor in almost anything, but one thing I never laugh about is cruelty to animals. If you don't get the joke either, write People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, 501 Front Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show, where we challenge everything and everyone. Today we have on as our guest, Alea Frisch. She is an energy healer, an ancient uh, energy caretaker, peace activist, spiritual facilitator, and fellow Ohm Times radio host. Leah, when is your show on Ohm Times? When can people catch you live? Uh, Circle of Hearts at 2 p.m. on Sundays. And, um, you know, just like your show, there, there's always the podcast archives, and I'm just going to start in the beginning of the 
first Sunday is to take questions, you know, from the uh, the listeners, because I'd like to hear what people think and what they want to know. You know, I've I've uh, a lot of years behind me. Unfortunately, but you know, experience in life really, you know, the ups and downs, uh, um, every type of experience in this world practically. And uh, I like to help, I like to really the one on one contact. And just like your show, to, to get people thinking, you know, not to preach to them, but you know, put something in their mind, make them think, you know, get those cerebral cells going. Because they're very important, and everybody has a purpose on this planet. So, with that being said, we're going to start this segment with a quiz. Are you ready? Oh, gee. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you want to keep those cerebrals working, right? Yeah, so, well, you, you know, <laughs> I had my <laughs> coffee. I'm good. <laughs> I'm sitting here drinking my coffee as we speak. So, um... The so here is the question: What movie did this come from? Ignore the okay. man behind the curtain. <laughs> oh my heavens! I'm thinking of the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Correct, it's the Wizard of Oz. And oh, the you're reason I start me. no, <laughs> and the reason that I start this segment with that is because this is called behind the curtain. You know, when Dorothy, when, when Toto pulled the curtain back, what Dorothy and her companion saw was not the great and powerful Oz, which was the illusion, but a shyster from Kansas whose balloon had gotten blown off direction. There's a lot of people out there that have a lot of great and powerful illusions they would like us to believe. So in this segment, I ask you to share a truth with my audience that and upon accepting it as truth, will change their lives. What truth would you like to share? For them to believe in themselves. This is something you know I constantly say in the um, on my show because we I use the idea of the circle. There's if you're in the middle of the circle, there's no one above you, below you, alongside of you, or you know behind or in front of you. You're there. You have a purpose on this earth you incarnated here for a reason and um i want people to get back to that you know to being authentic to find the spirit inside them there's a very important purpose why they're here at this time and this is what i think we're all on ohm are trying to you know the big media of giving all this information to everybody and let people pick what they need to find out at the moment but you know follow their heart you know investigate what makes them tick and not to follow people but just to be the beautiful light that they are and that's the important thing i want them to, you know to understand okay so so why why do you think that people do not recognize themselves as fabulous? What they're taught as a child, and I'm not blaming parents because this keeps on going back. You know, the parents were taught with particular uh, patterns, and it keeps on going back to ancestry. Children come in with this beautiful innocence and love and love the world and their parents and grandparents say they they restrict them no you know you have to follow this you have to be this you know in order to conform into society and even if you're kind of a rebel rouser you know other people try to conform you and um that's where they lose it, trying to fit in constantly. You know, they, if you're different, there's a beauty in being different. You're unique. Every soul is unique. So, you know, at that point, 
And like I said, it's not, I don't want to blame parents because their parents taught them the same. It's just the constant recycling of the par- the pattern of not being able to be who you are inside. Okay. So how did this pattern get saved? How did this pattern get started? How does it get keep on getting? Why can't we break out of this pattern? Because people, oh, it's the mass consciousness. You always want to feel like you belong. And um, to step out of it takes gumption. It takes strength. And you need to find uh, support in it. You need to find information or people of like minds that will support you in being unique. So most of this, as a child, you grow up in the school systems. And, you know, you go through those patterns and with your encapsulated family, etc. And by the time you start getting older, you start awakening to, well, maybe I want to do something different or whatever. So you go start to seek, you know, answers. And you need another support system. Then, you know, you need to find people who just want to support you for who you are and don't um, make judgments. Does that make sense? So you're, you, so what I hear you say is people would rather feel comfortable in a crowd of losers than be a winner in the solo situation. Yes. Okay. So, but I think, that, I think that trend is changing uh, mostly because of social media and the ability for people to connect with each other on the Internet that they're finding uh, the trend is changing now that it's okay to be unique. Uh, With the expansion of communication all over the world, um, people are gaining a little bit more confidence in uh, expressing their different talents and whatever makes them unique. So So, it's breaking, that pattern's breaking. Well, you know, I've kind of always sort of known that I'm unique and that unique is a double-edged sword. You know, we want to make unique this, like, really great, wonderful thing, and I wouldn't change myself. I mean, I wouldn't change myself. I wouldn't stop, quote-unquote, being who I am. But I have to say, on the other side of it, that... You know, unique can can be isolating. Unique can make you feel as if you know that somehow you're the person walking around with, you know, something between your teeth, and no one will tell you because you're unique. Um. So, what message do you have? We've got a couple more minutes before we go to our next break. What what questions do you, what question, what, what, what advice should I say? What advice do you have for my unicorns out there? <laughs> to be, um, relate people to people as you would like somebody to see you. If you address another person with the same type of energy or compassion or thought of openness, as you would like somebody to do for you, I think that's a start. You'd be surprised. It happens. People are more accepting. And then you have to be able to embrace your own uniqueness and your own purpose in life and be okay with it. So, um... uh, Go ahead. But you're saying, you know, here's my unicorns, and they're being treated badly by the 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 um, people that are stuck in thinking that unicorns don't exist. And you're saying, well, treat them the way you want to be treated, 
but they're getting treated badly. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling with that comment because I'm saying, <laughs> what do I tell my unicorns? Well, tell your unicorns to treat everybody fabulous. Yeah, but everybody's treating them like shit. I mean, well, can you give them a better skill set than that? No, somebody has – you have to be able to stand up for yourself and say, I'm okay with this. And it's not an easy thing to do. But if you are comfortable and say, this is okay, somebody could say something else, but then it's – let it bounce off of you. We're at a pivotal point in this world where I can see where you're coming from, that, you know – it always seems like the masses are throwing, you know, the, the, unless you belong to the in group here or something, you know, people make judgments, whatever. But eventually, if you just stand in your own light, as we call it, or be comfortable just with yourself, that you're that you're that pebble in that pond that causes the ripple. In the pond, in the effect, it someone's got to do it. <laughs> um, just real quick before the thing is, years ago, and we're talking years ago, uh, when I started to basically come out, I've always been very psychic or involved in energy healing, things that came natural to me, or you know, things I see. I mean, I I had. Uh, Baptist priest coming and say, oh, you're you're full of the devil. You know, I'm going to come and exercise you. And, you know, this went on for a year. Okay, and that's our sound. We're going to come back for our last segment with Alicia Fish. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Arrow's Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Om Times Radio. Hi, this is Carly Simon for Life Beat. The music industry fights AIDS. The AIDS crisis isn't over. There have been amazing scientific breakthroughs, but people are still dying, and your local AIDS organization needs your help more now than ever. Volunteer and make a difference. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the last segment of the Dr. Kevin Show this week. Uh, this week we have Aaliyah Frisch on. She is a fellow Ohm Times uh, radio show host. You can find out more about her at sanctuaryofthewhitedove.com or facebook.com backslash uh, Frisch A-L-L-A-Y-A-H dot Frisch, F-R-I-S-C-H. Of course, the easiest way to find her is to come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, M-Y-D-R-K-E-V-I-N. When you do, you will see that our write-up is there. All the links to all the places where you can find her are there. Um, and also remember, this is now a call-in show. So uh, those of you who are listening to it on replay, well, you're a little out of luck. But those of you who are listening to it live, you can call in at 202-570-7057. Um, Ask your questions of myself, of Alea, or just, you know, uh, share a comment or an insight about what we're talking about. 
If you are listening to this as a replay, you can still come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, find the uh, this week's post there, and you can write something in the comments. Uh, you can still ask a question, you can still open up a conversation, uh, share a statement, point of view. When you do that, if it is a question, um, and it's a question for Leia, then I actually, I track her down, I pick her up by her <laughs> ankles, and I shake her upside down until she gives me that answer. Uh, and then either her or I will respond to you on the Facebook timeline. So, you didn't know this was a sh violent show, did you? No, I didn't. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been called worse I didn't know what than to funny. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> okay. So, now, uh, here in our last segment, this segment is called What a Load of Crap with Dr. Kevin. And this is your time to share anything, anything at all. Uh, you can, you know, whether it's about trash removal or trashy people, but whatever you think is a load of crap that's going on in the world, here is your five minutes of fame to talk about it. So what load oh, of crap shit. would you like to talk about? <laughs> Again, I keep on coming back to think of um, everybody start thinking for themselves. You know, think from their heart. You know, just... Before you make a response, you know, before you get in the crowd, you know, that, that, that mass thing of um, get so lost into the energy of um, craziness that's going on, or, you know, think, start thinking from yourself and think from your heart energy, because everybody does, really, uh, the heart's a very important center of your heart and you go when you respond to somebody uh, don't always push the aggressive energy sometimes even if it's so wrong what they're saying to you just step back and you, you'll throw them off because they're waiting for the verbal nastiness to come back to them, you know, if you think, well, maybe they had a rotten day, but it's not right what they're doing to you, believe me, but how you reply to it or how you act to it, so many groups in this world are calling for attention, and rightfully so, there's so much wrong going on, but don't get involved in the violence um, and if you don't believe in the violence, I, you know, you have leaders in different groups that are saying, you know, to be peaceful. And if that's where you feel is right, do it. And you'll see others will start joining you. But if someone wants to, you know, rile the group up just to get that fear energy going on, you really got to stop and think how you react toward it. So that's, again, the thing with the medias. Mass media television promotes fear. Internet, radio, media, digital, magazines like Old Times Magazine, they promote. Think for yourself. And I think that's what's important. You know, don't, don't get lost in the bullying, fearful energy so you know that's pretty much where I come from you know I keep on trying to get people just to think you know stop think and if they do the world might start calming down a little it might start coming up with answers or solutions hopefully <laughs> okay so I've heard you say repeatedly in this show, you know, be conscious of what you're saying, be conscious of what you're doing, treat other people the way that you uh, want to be treated, um, you know, take into consideration where somebody else may be coming from, 
Um, don't get caught into like the bullying, the hype, into just fitting in to a crowd that, or into a um, uh, into a place that may be, um, you know, not honoring you. Um, yeah. Is that all right? I mean, is that yeah, am I, I'm am I pretty clear? Yeah, I'm not, you know, I, I see the world as it is. I mean, I'm just, I don't have these rose-colored glasses on and, you know, thinking of, you know, like you say, unicorns and all this other stuff. I don't. But I think we have a responsibility to, for what we put out into the world, our energy. So that's well, pretty much basic. Be responsible for what you offer the world. Okay. So I'm going to re I'm going to um I'm going to reframe this um for a second to kind of fit in the format. Because you know, my listeners are used to this format. That's why I send it out to all the guests. This is the format. Know it's coming. Here are the questions. Be prepared to answer the questions that I ask. So that's why I give them to people. And so what I didn't hear, what was what, what I didn't hear was what was a load of crap in the world, and so I'm going to try to reframe what you said, um, because it was kind of interchangeable in every segment, and I really try to get people to like look at things from a 360 degree circle and speak different languages, because I have a huge audience and they hear things differently. So I, I want so what, what's a load of crap is that if you keep putting out negativity in the world that you don't think it's going to come back and affect your life in a negative way. Would you say no, that's you have fair? to make a conscious No, you have to make a conscious decision. I'm just trying to say everybody's got to start growing up and make a, a conscious decision and don't be influenced by other things around you. Stand firm in who you are. Be proud of who you are, no matter what you okay. do. So, again, I'm going to answer, ask the question. Okay. What is the load of crap? Can you put it in the framework of the question? Uh, buying into fear. It's manipulative. Okay. So, okay. So, so, what you want my audience to know is buying into fear is a load of crap. It doesn't get you anywhere. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help you have a better life. And that when you buy into fear, you're buying into a load of crap. Is that, is that fair? That's good. Fabulous. That's great. <laughs> Yay, you know, we did I it. Mean, <laughs> Yay, we did it. Well, and it is, you know, and it is important because, I mean, as you picked up, I'm, I'm a little bit of a funny guy. And I try to bring some things in humorously, though seriously. And that's why I formatted the questions that I did and the way that I formatted them so that people get a chance to share their wisdom in a number of different ways and from a number of different perspectives. Because I want my, I want my audience to benefit from your wisdom. And they're going to do that. Um, when we answer the questions that I ask. So uh, I'm going to, one more time, Alea Frisian. She is an energy healer, ancient energy caretaker, peace activist, and spiritual facilitator with a unique background, which included a near-death experience and with her psychic intuitive abilities and expertise in many modalities, which she uses in private readings. She brings the energies of the ancestors into the present in order to boost the collective awareness of all life forms on the planet Earth. Leia is a spirit given name. It means one who shines the light on the path for others. Um, now, you said spirit given name. Did somebody outside of you give it to you, or did it pop in your head? Or Because we hear that term a lot, a spirit given name, um, but people mean different things by that. So, is this something you got in a meditation? No, I mean, uh, this, the whole life story is is kind of crazy, but the thing is, in 1999, I had a massive brain tumor, and resulting um, transition <laughs> came back, 
into a whole, uh, I used to be a hospice nurse and I came back and everything changed and my psychic abilities included um, seeing and hearing different things and Elia was a very strong name, I guess I, I guess you could say I heard from my um, higher self. Okay. Which took part of this experience. Absolutely. Well, like I said, I just wanted to illuminate because that's a term a lot of people, different people use. Like I, I talk about my medicine name. My medicine name is Wolf Cloud, and that was given to me by a shaman 25 years ago. And, you know, and there's a whole story, which I won't go into because we're going to be running out of time um, any minute now. But people are very curious when they hear that. Like, what is, I mean, I've had people say, well, what is a spirit name? Or how do you get a spirit name? And that's why I, when somebody has a spirit name, I like it to share, I like them to share that, that part of the story of sometimes it's given to you by a mentor, sometimes a teacher, sometimes it comes in your head. So I want to thank you for being on the show. Um, and I appreciate it. And she's on Circle of Hearts uh, Radio on Sundays at 2 o'clock here on Home Time. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. You too.